In the name of the holy, consubstantial, and undivided trinity, one God. Amen. Please be seated. One of the things that I learned to do years ago was to travel light. I often go through airports and train stations and other places, and I see people who, well, I'm not sure if they're going on vacation or if they're moving house. They seem to have brought everything they own with them. So many suitcases, and now I see the suitcases all have wheels on them so you can bring even more with you. And then, of course, try to take that gigantic bag and jam it into the overhead rack on the airplane. But I learned to travel light, to keep it simple, because for me, it's more important to enjoy the trip, to see where I'm going, to experience the new places and the new people, and not to be constantly wondering if I can get a cab or a cart big enough to haul everything that I brought with me. And I think Jesus is admonishing his disciples much the same way this morning, to travel light. In, in Mark's gospel with the story of the commissioning of the disciples and the sending them out, he tells them to take very, very little with them, to take only the bare minimum, to basically take the clothes on their back and, and an extra tunic in case there's a cold night, but to travel light and to go to the places and, and enter and stay wherever you're welcome, to eat whatever is put before you. And then if they don't welcome you in a particular place to shake the dust of that town off your feet as you leave and go someplace where what you're doing will be appreciated. Travel light. And, and I think that there's a really important message there for us as disciples as well. Not just about perhaps the simplicity of traveling with fewer bags and less baggage, but also to say, what do we bring with us when we're trying to tell others the story of Jesus Christ? What baggage do we carry along that perhaps gets in the way of the message? What hurt? What sadness? What grief? What resentment gets in the way and keeps us from being the ministers of the gospel that Jesus called the disciples and calls us to be. Sometimes what we bring inhibits us. We're intimidated to go into a situation or to, to offer some sort of comfort or counsel to someone because the situation is, we think it's too dangerous. To, and usually that means it's something that's like too much like something we experienced. We can understand and empathize with the hurts and the pain of others, but it sort of pricks at a hurt and pain in our own life. I know that those of us who have lost someone that we love dearly empathize so deeply and can sympathize so wholeheartedly with someone else who loses a loved one. But at the same time, it brings back the pain of our own loss. It renews our own grief and our own sorrow can sometimes get in the way. We bring a lot with us as we travel. We bring a lot along as we try to be ministers to others. And sometimes we bring too much and it gets in the way and we let our pain become bigger than the pain of others, our grief deeper than the grief of others, our resentments stronger than the resentments that hold back others. Now, I know that what I'm saying and what I'm asking is a lot easier said than done. Those feelings, those hurts, those resentments, all that baggage that we carry with us is very real. And it comes from very real places in our lives and our experiences. So the question becomes, what do we do with it? Where do we put it? How do we offload all this extra baggage, a lot of these deep emotions that have troubled us for years? Where do we put it? Where do we lay it? Where do we put it down? And the place where we can begin to do that is here, at this altar. 
because one of the great mysteries and the wonders and the powers of the Eucharist with the presence of Jesus, his real presence in the bread and the wine, his real presence in our hearts and lives, his real presence in this place and in all places where the faithful gather, is that Jesus will take up our burdens. This is a place where his sacrifice will help us wash clean from all of that excess baggage that we are carrying. This table is a place not only to make Eucharist, to set up the chalice and the paten with the bread and the wine, but it also becomes a loading dock. And it becomes a place for us to back up and dump as much of that baggage as we can on that altar. To leave it there at the foot of the cross. To leave it there for Jesus to take and transform it. Because you see, what happens in the power of the sacrament of Holy Communion is a transformation. Not only a change in bread and wine with Jesus' real presence being with us once more, but it transforms our lives and our way of being. It transforms our way of being in relationship with God and with one another. It is our chance to go to the Holy Dumpster and throw all that junk away that we, many of us, have carried far, far, far too long. I never set off on a journey taking nothing with me. I'm always taking the things that I need and a few of the things that just give me comfort and that I like to have with me. And so I don't ask you to leave behind all your experience and all your pain and all your grief, but take only that with you that you can manage. Take only that with you that you can bear. Take that only with you that helps keep the memory alive of what has happened in our experience, in our journey with God and with others. But take that excess pain, that excess grief, that over-the-top resentment, that, that deepest sorrow and hurt, and lay that on this table. Give it to Jesus, give it to God, and let it be taken up with our prayers and our offerings. We offer not only our time and treasure to God, but we also offer our deepest hurts, our deepest sorrows, and our deepest resentments. God invites us to give that up, invites us to lighten our load, invites us to travel a little more lightly, because when we rid ourselves of some of those more sour, bitter emotions, it opens us up more fully to not only accept the light and life and love of God, but to share that light, that life, and that love with others. By clearing some space in our lives of the accumulated junk and hurts and sorrows of a lifetime, we open up room in the cupboards and the closets of our hearts to store mo more of the beauty, more of the joy, more of the light, more of God's blessings. Leave some pain and hurt and resentment on the altar this morning when you come forward to receive. For some of us, it takes many, many, many trips to haul it all a little piece at a time. But let go of one hurt, let go of one sorrow, let go of one resentment this morning. And then again, the next time you approach the altar and the next and the next, it gets easier. And when we get that all out of the way, we begin to sometimes see what the root causes and the root problems in our lives really were. And now that we've cleared some of the junk away, we have a chance to work on the stuff that's really important. And God will be with us in that work too. Travel lightly and travel well. Offer up the hurts and the sorrows and the resentments at the altar. 
lay them at the feet of Jesus and let him take them up to lighten your burden, to lighten your load, to lighten your heart, and to enlighten your minds and your souls.